Hi, welcome back to my channel Pi by Me Maths. This is by Joe Vasudevan. Question number two. The functions f and g are defined by the functions are given here. Part A find the range of f. This question got two marks. Now in this part A we need to find the range of this given function. It's a reciprocal function. You need to pay attention to what's the condition given here. That's called the domain of this function. In this case, the domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. So for questions like this, okay, you need to remember this. If it's a linear function, you don't need to sketch the diagram. You can just find you can find the domain by plugging in the point. Maybe I'll 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 make a separate video of uh, how to find the range of all the functions. That works only for a linear function. If it's a straight line linear function, you can plug in the domain and you can easily find the range. But for the rest of the functions, it can be a quadratic function, cubic, exponential, reciprocal. For all these functions, you have to, the easiest way to find the range is by sketching the diagram. So one of my students asked me, sir, the question sometime, uh, the, range, the range question got only one mark. Is it worth drawing a graph? So let me tell you, once you practice, right, it won't take more than 10 seconds to get the, the graph of this function. So you just need 10 seconds to solve this question. You don't even need one minute. So you see how I'm going to do that. Once you have this function, you try to write this function in terms of 1 over x. You see you have 3x here. So what, I, what I'm going to do, you take this function as 5 minus 4 divided by I'm going to take this 3 out as a common factor. So you get x plus 2 over 3. So that's the first step. Now I'm going to sketch the graph. I'm going to start from 1 over x. This is the graph 1 over x. We all know that, right? If it's 4 over x, there is nothing much change here. It's 4 over x or even 4 over 3x also the same graph. You don't need to worry about stretching and all because anyway the graph is not going to cross any of the axes. So this is 4 over 3x. Now in this graph, if you replace x by x plus 2 over 3, we have learned this in P1 chapter 4, graphs and transformations. If you replace x by, in this graph 4 over 3x, if you replace x by x plus 2 over 3, it's a translation to the left side, 2 over 3 units. So if you move this graph here, 2 over 3 units, you'll have your vertical asymptote here at minus 2 over 3 and the graph would be like this. That would be this graph. And then there is a minus sign in front. So when there is a minus sign in front, it's a reflection over x-axis. So this part will go up here and then this part will go down here. This is the graph minus 4 over 3x plus 2. And then if you add 5, it's a translation to the uh, along the y-axis upwards 5 units. That means you need to move this graph 5 units upwards. So the graph will be like this. You have one vertical asymptote here at minus 2 over 3. And when you move this graph, graph upwards 5 units, you will have one horizontal asymptote here at 5. So you will have one piece of graph here, another piece of graph here. So if you practice more questions, right, you won't need much time to sketch this. You can just quickly sketch the graph and that's the easiest way to find the range without making any mistake. So we got the original graph. Now we need to pay attention to the domain. The domain is x is greater than or equal to zero, this part. x is greater than or equal to zero is yes, this part. And you need to look at the corresponding graph actually. The graph starts from here and all the way goes to five. But the graph will not touch five. So the range of this function is f of x is less than 5. Why only less than 5? Because 5 is asymptote. It will not touch 5. And from here, this point, 
to find the y intercept you replace x by 0 here when you replace x by 0 4 over 2 is 2 5 minus 2 5 minus 2 is 3 so the graph will take all the values from here to here these values but it will take 3 it won't take 5 because 5 is an horizontal asymptote so the range of this function is 3 is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal is less than 5. There is no equal sign here. So I'm going to repeat this again. For reciprocal functions, you sketch a graph quickly so you can find the range. Without. This question got two marks actually. So once you practice, you it will take like 10 to 15 seconds to sketch the diagram. So from the diagram, you can find the ranges. Pod B i find f inverse of x double i write down the domain of f inverse this question got three marks here in part b we are going to find the inverse function f inverse so here make x as a subject so bring this term here f of x here 4 over 3x plus 2 is 5 minus f of x and then swap these two 4 over 5 minus f of x is 3x plus 2. Bring the 2 here and divide everything by 3. So you will have 4 divided by 5 minus f of x minus 2 is 3x. So x is going to be 4 divided by 3 times 5 minus f of x minus 2 over 3. Divide everything by 3. There are several ways to find uh, f inverse of x. The method I teach here, just take the function, make x as a subject. So you will get something like this. Now replace x by f inverse and replace f of x by just x. So it's just uh, 4, 4 divided by 3 times 5 minus x minus 2 over 3. There are two algebraic fractions. Combine them. Use the butterfly method to combine them to a single fraction. Use this method. So 12 minus 12 minus 6 times 5 minus x divided by 9 times 5 minus x. Simplify, you'll get the answer. So you'll get 12 minus 6 fives are 30, which is minus 18. plus 6x divided by 9 times 5 minus x. You can take 3 as a common factor and cancel out. So it's going to be 2x minus 6 divided by 15 minus 3x. So that would be the f inverse. We got the f inverse. In wall level math, if they ask you to find f inverse, you don't need to worry about the domain or range. You can just simply find the f inverse. You can just write f inverse of x is 2x minus 6 divided by 15 minus 3x and you will be given full marks. But in this A level, when they ask you to find the inverse function, you have to find the domain of inverse function. But for this question, it's a separate question. They want you to find the domain of f inverse function. Even if it's not a separate question, you cannot just write the f inverse. You have to write the domain of f inverse. Otherwise, you're going to lose more. How to find the domain of f inverse? The domain of f inverse is same as the range of f of x. We got the range in first part, part a already. So take the range, write it as a domain here. 3 is less than, you cannot put f of x here, the input value, input a is x here, so x is less than. That's the domain of f inverse. Part C, find fg of negative pi. This question got two marks. So here in part C, we need to find the composite function, the value of the composite function at minus pi, fg of minus pi. So first let's find g of minus pi. Replace x by minus pi here. So 4 sine minus pi over 3 plus pi over 6. Everything inside the modulus. This will be minus pi over 6. So 4 sine minus pi over 6. 
So sine of minus theta is minus sine theta because of modulus the minus will be gone one four times one over two you will get two. So g of minus pi is two. Now fg of minus pi the composite function fg of minus pi is same as f of two. Thus we already got g of minus pi is two. Replace x by two in here. So it's going to be five minus four divided by two three so six plus two eight. 4 over 8 is half, 5 minus half is 4 and a half, which is 9 over 2. That's the answer.